What's up, independent insurance agents? Are you finally fed up with the massive amounts of time, money, resources being allocated to customer service within your agency? Is this causing your agency growth and revenue to become stagnant or even decline? The answer to this frustration is Glovebox, the premier mobile and web self-servicing solution made by successful independent insurance agents just like us, specifically for independent insurance agencies. Guys, this is the only platform with direct carrier connections Glovebox gives your clients the power to engage within their writing carriers and you, their agency, in a single, easy-to-use platform. Mention the Insurance Guys podcast and get 20% off of your monthly subscription for life, guys. For life. This isn't an intro deal. This is for life. Schedule your demo with Glovebox today. Thanks. Insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the Insurance Guys podcast. My name is Scott Howell, your fearless host and leader, insurance agency owner and insurance evangelist for iProtect Insurance and Financial Services, based out of Huntsville, Alabama. And before we get started on today's episode, please help me welcome, he is a six foot three sophomore from Sarah Land, Alabama, parade first team All-American rivals, five-star recruit. He is a fantastic insurance agent and a great American. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome the incomparable Mr. Brad Nowers. How are you, Bradley? Great, Scott. How are you today? Well, I'm not doing so well, Bradley Flowers. That's a seven, curveball. Seven straight days of tummy problems. Mm. I believe that I have a North Korean beetle parasite in my stomach right now and I'm headed to the doctor after well guys let me just be honest with you I have the pins diapers on right now to make it through this podcast that's how no, bad it is no, you don't. but Bradley we got a lot to talk about today brother I think this podcast needs to start with how much you love your brand new car tell them Bradley tell them what you did it's I'm great. so happy for it's you great it's the I'm not a car guy ever. so it pisses me off listeners I love it so much Listeners, he loves that vehicle more than he loves me, and that is a fact. That is factual information <laughs> right there, folks. That is factual information. We took we went on our first road trip with it this weekend. We went to Lagrange, Georgia. There's nothing in Lagrange, Georgia, but a Great Wolf Lodge. I guess water park is what you would call it. So it was great. And, it was good. And as, and as you put it, your daughter would rather go there than Disney World. <laughs> she would. Guys, I'm humbled and blessed to be here today. If you love the podcast, like the podcast, or hate the podcast, please subscribe to the podcast. We love all of you. We appreciate y'all all listening to the podcast. We continue to grow every month, and I am humbled and blessed to have our guest on. As I've always told you guys, we have a responsibility to each one of you that listen to this show to speak truth to tell the truth and to give you great content each and every week. We try to do that by bringing on fantastic insurance agency owners to find out what they're doing that's working. We try to bring on people who are technology people in the industry and have products and services that you guys can at least look into to see if they fit the needs of your agency. And then I love to bring in, as we're going to bring in very soon, Mr. Andy Frasilla. And if you don't know who he is, folks, you better look him up. He's only got one of the, if not the largest podcast in the United number, States of America. Number one business podcast in the world. That's pretty big. I think he makes more money off sponsorships than we do, Bradley. Probably. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give this man today the introduction that he always deserves and let's row the boat towards the lighthouse today. Hope you guys can take just a couple of things from this podcast go out into your agency, see if it works for you and if it helps you make more money for your family and for your wife, your husband, your kid's college fund. And that's what this is all about, right? We all know that. So without further ado, I am honored to present him. He is originally from Ontario, California. He currently resides in Walcott, New York. And yes, I said that correctly. He is married to the beautiful Kathy and they have two beautiful babies and he is a graduate of the University of Southern California. He has a passion for small commercial insurance and is the former agency owner of Wells Insurance Services. He has over 20 plus years of experience in insurance and finance, and he is currently the general manager of CoverWallet, leveraging technology, data science, and design to provide independent agents with the fastest and easiest way 
to quote, bind, and service their clients online. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my profound honor today to introduce to you first time guest on the Insurance Guys podcast, Mr. John Wells. How are you, John? Hey, Scott, I'm doing great. Thanks for the build up there. I appreciate I, it. Brother, I am so excited to have you on this show. And you know what? I normally, I normally go through people's past and what they've done in the industry, but there's been one thing that you said, one on a podcast with my brother from the, another mother, Mr. David Carruthers, and one before we got on the show today. When you were an agency owner with Wells Insurance Services, I have heard you say that at one point in time, you guys and girls there were writing five million dollars a month in insurance premium is that what i heard yeah the last year and a half i averaged just over five million a month in premium uh didn't get there overnight i learned uh you know it was not an easy road i started insurance off as a you know small guy uh learning how to make macaroni and cheese and if it was a good month i had hot dogs in my macaroni and cheese mm. and I, I learned by screwing up. I learned by mentors like you and Mr. David Carruthers, you know, and a lot of people that uh, just taught me, you know, step by step what to do. And that's my passion. I want to make sure that agency owners, man, it's a hard gig. And I want to make sure that you have, know the tools that are available to help you grow your business. I'm going to ask the question that I know that every single person listening to this wants to ask. <laughs> and I'm going to ask it in the way that they would ask it. What the heck were you doing? <laughs> okay. When we first started in commercial insurance, we think that, uh, okay, we're going to treat it just like personal lines and we're, we're going to treat it like a commodity. And I didn't. I, I focused on the relationship. When I started in commercial insurance, I started off line by line. I started off with auto repair shop. Okay. I didn't know anything about auto repair shops other than, you know, they, I thought they were ripping me off and they fixed my car. Mm. So. You know, especially, you know, at the time I had a drive can hardly. So uh, it was more in the shop than anything else. So I, I, it started off when I got into insurance. First of all, why did I get an insurance, man? I have over 20 years of finance experience. You know, I, I owned a finance company. I loved, I loved working that kind of stuff. And then I got into the insurance business because a, I had a non-compete when I left the finance world. So ladies and gentlemen, be careful of non-competes. Second, as I was trying to figure out what to do, I had an agent rip me off flat out just ripped me off. And, and, you know, if you want to know the story, ask it and I'll give it to you. But what it did is it, it made me realize, one, how many other people out there are getting ripped off? How, how many other people maybe don't understand what they're, you know, what products they're going after? So I came in, I wanted to be the subject matter, matter expert. I started off with auto repair shops. I realized, one, every repair shop I know, he was there at 7 a.m. They're, they're there before, they, before the, the crack of dawn working on paperwork. So guess who else was there? I was there. I was knocking on their door. I didn't try and sell them insurance. I started asking, asking questions about their industry. What concerns you? What worries you about your business? You're working for your, you're working every day to keep afloat. You know, how can I help? And, you know, the shop owners educated me. So I learned auto repair shop. Then I went into hotels. You know, then I ended up insuring hotel chains. Then I was insuring sports stadiums. I was insuring casinos in Las Vegas. So it grew from there and I just learned how to do it. Don't, be, don't walk away from an opportunity because you don't know how to do it. Learn how to do it. Hey, John, you spoke about something a little earlier that caught my attention because it was a subject that Bradley, David Carruthers, and myself were having this weekend. That's right, folks. We sit around and on Facebook Messenger talk about insurance all weekend because we are dorks. But <laughs> the thing that the thing that we got into a conversation about, and I think you probably better than anybody I could get on this podcast is qualified to talk about is the difference between premium written per month or annualized premium versus revenue. And the reason I bring that up is because David Carruthers and I were having a conversation. Bradley and I coming from the captive world into independent the last few years, we have a tendency to want to always talk about, uh, you know, green new premium or, or annual premium. Mm -hmm. And we want to talk in those terms. And David Carruthers is like, 
you know, well, I don't, I don't care about Green New Premium. I want to know what's the total premium that's coming into my agency month over month. Can you talk just a minute about the differences between those? Because I think some people probably don't understand or maybe they don't understand uh, the importance of the difference between those two. Well, first of all, you know, premium is great, but it doesn't keep the lights on. So, <laughs> you know, keep that in mind. You know, when I was captive and I started off as captive, I was winning all kinds of awards, man. Uh, you know, the, everybody was, was telling me how great I was doing. And then here I was, I had to borrow money from my parents one, uh, one month to, to make payroll. You know, insurance brothers and sisters, that's not the way you want to be. Mm. You know, I, I was making all this premium but it was not translating into revenue. So what I, I did is I sat down and I had a come to Jesus meeting with myself and my accounting book. And I had to figure out, okay, what am I spending per account? What is my return on investment on my time? What is my return on investment per policy that I'm writing? One would think, okay, you know, in the capital world, $5 million in premium, that's a hell of a lot of money. Well, guess what? It is. But are you aware that two thirds of that has to be reinvested into the business? Mm -hmm. I mean, how, you know, you're dealing with client entertainment, you're dealing with paying your AMS, you're dealing with paying your staff. When, when, you're, when you're writing an insurance policy, what you need to do is develop a return on investment strategy. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself and your agency as an investment. You know, how much are you planning on getting out of your insurance agency? How much are you planning on getting out of your time? What's your strategy? If mm -hmm. your strategy is long-term and you're looking to annuitize your book, great. What are you going to do to keep your retention up? Mm -hmm. What is your plan? Again, look at all these key factors and don't forget that premium doesn't keep the lights on. Right. It's the checks from the carrier. That, that's, that's how you pay your bills. Well, it's right. one of those things too. You very rarely, there's a lot of agents that, that we're friends with that in some of these Facebook groups online, or, you know, at the end of the month, this is how much we wrote this month. And it's always a premium number. And, and while that's, that, that's, that's all good and well to each his own or to each her, her own, you hardly ever see Scott or myself touting numbers in some of these groups, which in a lot of cases would be more than, than some of the numbers that are being bragged about. And the reason why is like you guys are saying, there's no correlation to, to actual profitability, which is what we're all trying to accomplish. You know, one, one thing, one example I like to give is in the month of December, November and December, you know, portal insurance, we had our premium numbers were, would make some other agencies blush we lost money. <laughs> this, you know, it's, it, there's, there's not a direct correlation. And just like, you know, even going further back to when Scott and I were captive apps, right. You know, we don't track apps here because right. like you can't tell me 350 apps at one agency is the exact same amount of revenue and profitability as 350 apps at another one. Now I can understand why a big corporation wants to track apps because at a 30,000 foot scale amortized out, they know they're not only going to have the numbers, but the data mm. for it to be profitable. And it's easier to track one to one than it is 3,500 and 3,600 and, and things like that. So I get it, but you guys are absolutely spot on. Hey, I tell you what, Bradley, I hear a lot of all state agents talk about app count and I'm like, I, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. Like what do you, what, what, what's the deal with app count? I what's the know. deal with airline food? I don't, I don't have any, I, I don't know really what, how we translate that to anything, but you're exactly a thousand percent right. And I'll tell you one more thing and then we're going to get on today's topic. You better be careful what niche in the commercial industry you go after. Mm-hmm. Because Ooh, diversify, diversify, diversify. <laughs> hey, listen, guys, if you never listen to anything I'm about to say, you want to jump on some of these niches, you better get ready to hire some folks. Now, whether they're in the VAs or American, whatever they are, that takes a tremendous amount of service work with mm -hmm. certain niches in the insurance industry, which then correlates to more of that revenue being you know, pushed over to the expense side because you've had to hire three people to handle all of this business that you're getting, you know, uh -huh. in that particular niche. And I, I've seen that happen quite a bit. You just got to be careful with that kind of stuff. Well, not only that, when John said hotels, I, I tensed up over here a little bit because you, could you imagine only doing hotels mm. in 2018, oh, no. 2019, and then 2020 comes around the corner and everybody's non-renewing? Yep. Yeah. When I first started, man, I had the brilliant uh, idea, you know, you know, let's focus on this. And 
and I did, I focused on a specific niche and I, I mean, I was writing uh, large dollars in premium and I was losing my shirt because the service work on there was costing a lot more than the premium I was making. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, you just need to, you know, you wouldn't sit in a stool with three uneven legs. Yeah. You know, that would be a right. miserable experience and you'd never be able to balance. You want to mm -hmm. diversify your book and make sure that each stool leg is, is the right length for what you need right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, what you want to do too, is you want to look at the cost of service as well. Uh, Sydney Rowe put out a podcast recently on that subject, or that was one of the things that was spoken about. And in case anyone didn't catch that, the, the cost to service is you take the, the entire cost of your service team. So salaries, technology they use, anything that, that goes towards service, any expense that goes towards service, and you divide that by the number of service activities that are done in a given year. Now, first of all, a lot of folks listen to this, their management system may not have the capabilities to track service activities, or maybe their staff isn't entering it in there correctly. Both are a problem, but with that number, you get your cost of service. So essentially what that means is, is every single time the phone rings with a service activity, this is what it's costing your agency. Right. So for portal insurance, that number is about $35. Wow. Just so everybody knows. Wow. Now that's probably a little high because again, it's very, very hard to track every single service activity, but $35. So if my average customer is calling in two times a year, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to write a $700 account. Yeah, Bradley, what I did is I actually took the policy level. So I would tell you, okay, the premium in that policy is this much. How much, how much of that was, did I have to accrue for marketing? How much did I have to accrue for service? How much did I have to accrue for taxes? Guys, we forget about taxes all the time. You know, Uncle Sam is going to take his share. So what I did is I built out a, a model on a spreadsheet that, that I would run every policy through. And every month, I'd be able to tell you what my estimated return on investment was for booking that policy. Mm -hmm. That's when I realized, you know, I can make money on a thousand dollar bob if I didn't touch it. Right. For me, that's where I used cover wallet. I that's mean, where, as I said, that's where cover wallet comes into play. Let's talk, talk about that. So John, the reason you're here today is to help these agents. I have got two agents in my office who write small commercial insurance. Neither one of them have ever heard of co cover wallet before. And I have a large group of insurance agents that listen to this podcast who just heard me say that and their head kind of tilted to the side like a calf looking at a new gate. And they're like, huh, what is cover wallet? What, are the, what is this? Our job is to at least introduce cover wallet to them today so that they can go out there and look into it and see if it's right for their agency. So, so lead with that and tell us what it is. So Cover Wallet for Agents is a digital platform designed for agents with real-time carrier integration. What does that mean in English? And let me tell you a story on how I used it in my business. It may not be, work for everybody, but it worked for me. What I did is there's a feature which is called the shared application feature. And that's what made the money, man. I posted that link on my website. I posted the link on my email signature. I even put it in my text messaging program. And what that did is that allowed insured not my staff, to go in there, click a button and start their quote. Mm. Look, think about it. On your website, do you have a request for a quote? Yes. Okay. And what is it doing? It's going sent, getting sent to an email, right? So think about the experience you would have for your insured if they can click on a button and bind a quote right there. And better yet, think about if your insured clicked and bound a quote and you got paid for it. We've been so, doing that a lot in our, in our agency with the, with the small stuff that we may just not want to fool with. We'll just send them the share application deal. And it's great, John, because the person who can go through the process to either do their own quote or even possibly finish it, typically that person also not only has the capability to service it themselves through Cover Wallet, but they also usually want to do it that way. They don't want to call into an agency and, and, and have to wait for somebody to pick up. Yeah, I've no, you know, think about it. The new consumer that we have now, man, if you would have told me 20 years ago, I'd be living off my cell phone, I would have probably laughed in your face. I remember, you know, my geometry teachers telling me, hey, you better be careful. You'll never have a calculator with you all the time. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? Hey, yeah, exactly. Well, think about this, dude. I was thinking about this on the way back from Atlanta yesterday. Like human beings are so much smarter today mm -hmm. than we were 20 years ago because you literally have unlimited capabilities with your phone. 
Like if yeah, you want to know anything in the world, you have that knowledge instantly. Yeah, at four years old, my son knew how to use an iPad. At four years old, I was eating dirt. I mean, <laughs> right? Yep. Hey, hey, insurance agents from around the world, here's your question from Scott Howell: Who is the seventeenth president of the United States of America? Here's the answer for you. Who cares? I can look it up on Google. I happen to know the answer to that though. Just, just saying. Well, I'm sure there's a few people that do. <laughs> go, 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 go ahead though. Go ahead and tell us who it was. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, cause I want them to Google and I want them to, to tag you in it. But, um, <laughs> hey, so, hey, so you. fun fact, fun fact, Okay. Madison Pruitt from the bachelor, Okay. her dad was my history teacher in high school. And he's okay. the reason I know the answer to that question. Hey, hey, I bet he was a good one. Cause I know who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I know who you're talking about. I know him as well. His brother and I are friends. And of course, you you and his brother are friends. We've actually done some texting together, but I know exactly who you're talking about. Hey, John, another thing I love about Cover Wallet, these agents all, all, all I'm doing is I'm going to, to be the conduit between all of these insurance agents listening to this and you. And one of the, of the many things that I do like about Cover Wallet, direct billing oh my god ladies and gentlemen if you've ever had to get into agency billing not only help, not help only you. direct billing scott i will tell you a low-key benefit that i love is the financing is built into it correct correct so you do not have to get involved with the whole billing stuff that goes into binding a commercial policy especially an agency build account mm -hmm. but tell us a little bit about that john about the billing side of this so first of all, it's an automatic bill. It's set it and forget it. You know, you once they sign up, you know, if they pay in full, great. I love those. Uh, if they're financing, great. It's all set up. They hit a button and it ports right over to the finance company. It's literally one click and go. Uh, Scott, one of the things that uh, I want to bring up is when I was using the platform, right? You know, Cover Wall for Agents isn't going to have an appetite for everything. We're not going to buy into everything. I have yet to see an MGA or even a carrier that's going to be the flavor of the month every month. It, sure. That's not going to happen. What, what helped me is I was able to have the insured click that application link. And then if I didn't get any markets, I simply clicked a, a download button and downloaded the accords. Right. So I didn't have to fill out the accords. And if I, you know, if I didn't have a market for Cover Wallet, then I immediately sent that out to, to my other market. That, that's, that was going to be my next question. Let's say the person that clicks on my website and wants to get an insurance quote or a policy fills out the, the application or the accord form right there. And it just happens to be that it's some kind of exotic risk or, or something that's out of your wheelhouse. Like your fireworks stand? Like fireworks stands. Well, you know, what would happen, what happens then, but you just explained that. So thank you. I, you just answered a question that all 250,000 agents were wanting to know. I'm going to, I'm going to ask a question that, that I'm sure some folks are wondering as well. What, what led you from agency doing 5 million a month to jumping on board with cover wallet? How, how did that process go? So I got tired of California, you know, great state has its issues. I so sold you moved my, to New York. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. You got to look, you know, I never said I was smart. Uh, you know, I, Moved, uh, you know, from the nice sunny weather into the snow and ice, but it was a move that I made for my family and I sold all of my investments. I sold my agency and I came up here to semi-retire. You know, I, I'll tell you what, in Wolcott, there's not much, there's not much else to do other than, than retire. So it, it was a nice change of pace. I realized very shortly, I mean, within three months that I don't have a retiring personality. I'm a workaholic. I love working 24 seven. My wife laughs at me because I sleep on an average of four hours a night. I'm but, not. I'm not far behind you. I'm about five right now. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. I I love working. I love uh, I love helping people. And when uh, when the opportunity came up, uh, Aon recruited me to come in and and, and work for Cover Wallet for Agents as uh, first as their sales manager and then as the general manager. I saw an opportunity to get in on the ground floor and create a really useful tool for agents. You know. I'm passionate about commercial insurance. I am even more passionate about helping our agents out there. Mm, I love that so much. Hey, and John, I got, a, do it. I, I got a stupid question that I hope nobody takes offense to. So I know what a raider is. Okay. I know, I know what that is and I know what a carrier is. 
but I, I don't know how to classify a cover wallet because you're, you're not a writer and you're not a carrier. What, what, what do you, what would you consider? Are you like a host wholesaler maybe? Yeah. The term that I'm creating is digital wholesaler. Cause Oh, I like that so much. <laughs> so we are a wholesaler, but cover wallet just doesn't end with the market. Okay. It's how we do stuff and how we make it easy. So yeah. first of all, when you log in, you don't need to know class codes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're booking clerical, you're, or uh, one I got today, a roofing consultant at 80, you know, 8810, you know, clerical class code, you don't need to know any of that. You enter in the industry and it's simple, easy questions right. that are put together for the insurance app. So, hey, you know, you know who I think would benefit the most besides people like me who have small commercial agents on the independent side that are kind of kind of those hybrids that can do personal lines and small commercial. Cause I've got, I've got two of those. I've got one that only does mid market, you know, mid market, large market, but I've got two that are hybrid trained that can write a personal lines policy one minute and then a small commercial policy the next minute. Now that those people the cover wallets deadly for that. But what about a captive agent that could get permission from their carrier that, hey, you know, we, we don't, you know, y'all don't play in the small commercial game very much. Would you guys let me write through Cover Wallet? I could see somebody like that really benefiting from Cover Wallet, being able to use Cover Wallet. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I would recommend they check their contract. There are some right. captives that say you can't even submit. Sure. Uh, there are there are two uh, captives out there who shall remain nameless that in their contract, it says you can't be appointed. Right. Well, guess what? The good thing is, is we handle the appointments. Correct. So Correct. there's no minimums. There's no dealing with the agency appointment. We take care of all that for you. That's right. Yeah. See that right there. I could see somebody really knocking the home run with, with yeah. cover wallet talk about or, or you could just refer it to me that, that we could do that or yeah. refer it to bradley flowers <laughs> what, blah, 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 one blah, thing blah. i i want to talk about john and, I, and i've actually spoken about this on the podcast before so i you know if i were to go into say insurance soup with thirty thousand agents and say hey guys what do you guys think about carriers going direct to consumer Probably 28,999 of the agents are going to set or 29,999 are going to say it's a bad thing. Um, I am in the minority in that I actually like when my carriers, some of my carriers go direct to consumer because of two reasons. One, A, it helps me weed out the people that I probably don't want to write anyway because there's going to be a, a lot of business that doesn't fit in our wheelhouse. That's going to go direct consumer and handle a lot of back to the service call. You know, a lot of unprofitable business go to there. B, a lot of the people that are buying from Geico and lemonade and folks like that, like aren't, aren't my clients anyway. B by that carrier going to direct to consumer, they build brand in the process. One of our biggest struggles going from captive to independent, I went independent two and a half years ago is having to sell that carrier that this client's never heard of because they're not advertising. You, you know, we don't run into that problem with carriers like Progressive or Safeco or Liberty or someone like that. So I'm a fan of that. And, and I'll be honest with you, I, I know Cover Wallet does go direct to consumer a little bit. I'm a fan of the way you guys flow leads to agents through that process. Um, I think that's a very good case study in showing agents why it's not a bad thing for some, some carriers and wholesalers to go direct to consumers. So talk a little bit about that and how agents can take advantage of that. So Bradley, there, there's two things here. There's one, uh, there, there's one carriers marketing to your insureds. There is a national carrier that I refuse to bring onto the platform because they refuse that, to sign an agreement saying they wouldn't market to my insureds. Mm -hmm. and that was a big thing for me. I mean, I would bust my, my buns to get this policy booked. And then next thing you know, six months uh, down the road, they're getting a letter from the insured saying, hey, why are you using an agent? You yep. know, that, that, that's, that's one point that, that we don't get involved with. Now, do we have a direct con to consumer division? Yes, but it's run as a completely separate business unit. It's a different team. It's a different, different management structure. And the two don't even talk to each other. 
So as far as placing cons uh, consumer business, consumers can go to coverwallet.com. The agents go to the agent side you know, um, at Cover Wallet for Agents. It's a completely two different worlds that, that don't really mix. I don't believe in taking the hard work of agents and trying to market them directly. That's not something that we do. Now, the, most of the leads that we get, you mentioned the free leads, those come from aggregators. So, I mean, those are leads that, uh, Ru, you know, Ruth on this uh, podcast will tell you, we pay, we pay top dollar for those. Mm. But what we do is we pay those and we want to reward the agents that are, that are binding with us mm -hmm. because our goal is to help the agencies grow or the agents grow their agency. So the way that works is when you bind a policy with cover wallet, you get X amount of leads that you can go in there and claim. And once you claim it, nobody else, it doesn't give you all the info. It just kind of tells you class code, revenue, I think number of employees. And then once you claim it, then it lets you see all the info and the contact info and that sort of thing. But once you claim it, John, if I'm not mistaken, it actually pulls it out. So nobody else can get that lead. Correct. Yeah. If you claim a lead, you're the only cover wallet agent that's going to have that lead information. And as a point, that lead doesn't need to be booked through cover wallet. Mm -hmm. So say, for instance, you pull up a trucking lead, which is not something that cover wallet's going to write. You simply, or a fireworks stand. <laughs> While you do is you take, you take that lead, you, you can even uh, enter it in, fill out the accords, and then send that to your other market. Hey, hey John, I got, a, I got three questions for you. Question number one, is there outside of, you binding a policy and then cover wallet rewarding you by giving you a certain number of leads. Could Bradley go in there and just buy a certain number of leads from cover wallet? If he, if he so chose to do that. No, uh, our leads aren't for sale. Yeah. Now I'll tell you what I'll do is uh, any of your listeners that uh, mention your podcast, will arrange some free leads for him. Mm, I like that. Very mm. mucho. Thank you. What's that, that. What's that link again, Scott? It's uh, coverwallet.com forward slash insurance guys. That is, that is the link that when this podcast comes out, if any of you are interested, and, and that leads and me that'll to- be, my, That'll be linked below on your, on your podcast app. Of approval, absolutely. Of, of choice. Let me ask the $10 million question, John, what does it cost to be a member of Cover Wallet? Uh, well, how much do you want it to cost? I mean, uh, we've been asked to charge uh, quite a bit of money for this platform. And so far we've been pushing back. So uh, the agents won and it is completely free. So we aren't charging you a cent to use the platform. And now none of you agents have any reason not to try Cover Wallet because there's no possible way you can be free, basically. I mean, what are, what are talk about some of the carriers you guys have on there, John? I, that was my next question. Good, good question, Bradley. I mean, we use Guard, we use Liberty Mutual, we use Hiscox, we use, uh, have some propriety or stuff from Star, we use CNA, we, I mean, we use quite a few carriers. And then we're also bringing in Appetite, you know, uh, we're bringing in carriers. Now, I'll let your podcast be one of the first to know, but we are going to be launching Access Cyber. This is a, a cybersecurity product that that is top notch that's been designed for for our cover wallet for agents. So you you know you're one of the first to know we are going to be launching a product. Hot so we're presses. Yeah, the goal is help the agents grow their business, find the carriers that want to play by our non-marketing uh, mm -hmm. rules and agent-centric focus and let's give the agents the tools that they need to be the next millionaire. Hey hey John, I got another question for you. I'm sorry Bradley, I promise this will take but just a second. If I write a piece of business or an insured binds business through Cover Wallet, through my agency, right? And let's say the carrier is Guard, but I have a direct appointment with Guard. How does, how does that work? So first of all, anything that comes through Cover Wallet for agents, if you get an approval on a carrier you already have your own appointment with, I recommend you writing it under your own appointment. Okay, okay. Yeah, that would obviously that would make sense. I have a, I just have a, a general question because I'm 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 curious. It's something that's been on my mind. What do you make of this? I don't want to call it a craze, but this increasingly popular trend of embedded insurance. You know, we've seen a couple couple press releases recently where you know X Y Z platform includes X Y Z carrier for people purchasing their product. Um, I think in a lot of ways it makes a lot of sense because insurance is not the thing. Insurance is the thing that gets you to the thing. 
what, what do you make of that? And, and what do you think cover while its role, if any, will be in that sort of thing in the future? And what, and what do you think agents need to do? So I think you're going to start seeing a lot more partnerships coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, as the economy gets tougher, you know, these corporations that have big marketing dollars are going to be marketing for a smaller and smaller pool of clients. So you're going to see them spending their marketing dollars to get in as early to the sales process as they can. So if they can, if you can get, a, uh, say, a lead aggregator that is not just giving leads, but also saying, here's a quote to, to their and insureds, which is actually something that I, I, it will be in the works. You will see that before the end of the year. You are going to see a company that, that is going to be, instead of selling leads to agents, that they are going to be using those leads and sending them out uh, with insurance quotes. Do I, do I agree with it? I think some of the, the policies, maybe, but uh, in a lot of policies where you need that agent expertise, I, I, I disagree with it. Mm -hmm. I, th I, think, I, I think there's a place in the market for it, but I'm not sure that commercial is that place. Hey, John, I have, a, I have another question for you. And I'm, all I'm doing is the conduit between myself and all these agents. One of my people gets on my website and they fill out an application. They bind the coverage for that policy. Two weeks later, they call my office and they speak to Brittany next door to me right here. And they say, hey, I've got a CNA policy through you guys. And I need a certificate of insurance through, you know, through, through cover cover wallet. So what, what do they do there? How does that work? So Brittany would just log into the platform, pull up the agent accounts and click request a certificate. Or send That's it to it. the client, let them do it. Yeah. Or send the link to the client. Right. I will tell you, I do recommend that as an agency owner that you look at the certificates. Head Absolutely. Out. Absolutely. Yeah. You'd want to do that. Definitely. So when she requests that certificate from I guess the cover wallet service end of cover wallet. Does that certificate come back to both herself or just her? And then she forwards it to the, to the insured. Is that what happens? Yeah. You just click on the certificate, click share and, uh, and, and, uh, and click send. And it'll it, send it, it right it to the insured. It the agent on there, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Hey, another question I've got, again, I've got lots of questions because I don't, I haven't been using cover wallet, so I'm excited to do this, but I, I want to speak to all these agents that are listening. Is all, is all this cover wallet stuff, does it have cover wallet all over it or is it, is it white labeled for I protect insurance? If you use the shared application link and somebody clicks on the link to access the policies, they're going to see your agency logo and contact information front and center. Gotcha. Now, there's a little cover wallet logo in there that we need for compliance. Right. Your agency logos are on all of the quotes. So you are front and center. Got you. Bradley Flowers, you have any more questions? No, sir. I'm going other, to than, other than telling all the agents to go to www.coverwallet.com slash insurance guys. And sign up. Correct. Right. Absolutely. John, I'm going to warm your heart today. I'm about to tell you, it, it, it is secret time and secret time. Trust is going, tree. Trust tree. So it is going to warm John Wells' heart. So what all of you do not know that are listening to this, to the sound of my voice, is one of John's passions is youth musical education. And I want to let all of the 250,000 listeners today know that when I was in the seventh grade, I sat third chair trumpet in the middle school band yes sir that just happened ladies and gentlemen third chair trumpet at hamilton middle school can you right play here. the trumpet still i can play a few notes i actually saw one sitting behind john right there yeah that one i actually volunteer for a group uh non-plugging called buglers across america and we volunteer and we play taps uh, for veterans at the funerals right so mm. It, to me, it, you know, music is the way into the heart. You got to love it. There you go. Well, guys, I appreciate you being on this show today, John. You have uh, unveiled yet another technology that our agency force, our people that listen to the show can go out and look into today. And I think what they're going to find out, if, if Bradley Flowers is using it, and I know he is, it's probably something the rest of y'all need to, at a minimum, look into. But I think if you start using it, 
especially for small commercial stuff, you're, you're probably going to keep using it, I, I would assume. And I love the way you can integrate it with website, text, signature on your email, that kind of stuff. I mean, that is huge. And uh, I look forward to sending in my documentation so that we can get signed up with you guys, too. Thank you so much for that, John. Hey, I'm thank gonna, you. Yes, sir. I'm going to go ahead and end this podcast today, guys. As I always say, rewards come from action, not discussion. Get your asses out from behind that desk today. Go out into the big, bad world and build relationships. Make money for your family, for your husband, for your wife, for your kids' college fund, and for your parents who are struggling out there today. 2021 is your year. Let's move the ball into the end zone this year and start making a bunch of damn money, folks. Let's do that together. Make money for your family, write good business for the agencies that you represent, and write good business for the companies that you represent. Bradley Flowers, I love you. Thanks, man. Thanks, John. John, thank you so much, brother. We appreciate you being on the show. And thank you to Ruth. Ruth Hennigan for making this happen today. Thank you so much, Ruth. Guys, you are listening to the Insurance Guys podcast, and we love you too, and we look forward to seeing you back here next week. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Insurance Guys podcast. If you need to know more about me or you need to get in touch with Scott, you can always reach me at theinsuranceguyonline.com or email me at iprotectins at gmail.com. And if you need to get in touch with Mr. Bradley Flowers, go to bradleyflowersinsurance.com or email him at bradley at sarahlandinsurance.com. Guys, we love you. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to being with you again real soon on the next episode of the Insurance Guys. Take care.